So I put December 19th. It's actually December 20th. So I'll have to fix that. Sorry. Anyway, um, so today we're going to be talking about trap code echo space. Um, I get a lot of questions about this. You know, Trap Code Echo Space goes way back. It's one of the earlier products from Petter Norby and Trap Code. Um, I don't know exactly which, uh, if it's second or third or whatever. I mean, uh, uh, the first one, as far as I know, was Shine. And then, uh, I don't know. It was one of the very, very early ones. And as far as I know, I can't remember where I read this. I read it somewhere, and I think I remember asking Peter about it as well, that it came about, Tribe Code Echo Space came about as an idea from Belief Studios, from those of you who are old enough to remember Belief Studios, which is a very, very uh, influential motion design house out of Santa Monica, actually not too far from here. Um, they did some fantastic work, very influential, one of the very early adopters of After Effects in major, major motion design uh, advertising and, and uh, network broadcast design. Uh, they since kind of folded up and the owners retired from motion design and the other people went on to a motion design house called King and Country. But um, Echo Space came about, uh, from what I understand, an idea from them about uh, using multiple layers and, you know, the, the idea that um, if you can have one layer and then sort of echo it over time, have its parameters uh, be able to uh, echo throughout time. You know, your X location or your Y location or your, your rotation or scale or opacity, that kind of stuff. And these things you can set up via expressions, but they're kind of tedious because if you're you know changing things frequently, you're constantly going back and forth and, and tweaking the expression across a bunch of layers. Um, so you have to like delete all the layers, copy the expression, edit, duplicate all the layers again, paste the expression back in. And this is more or less what Echo Space does for you. It sort of um, automatically manages uh, multiple After Effects layers uh, and how we can uh, ripple the parameters uh, over time. We can actually stagger the layers over time. We can uh, modify uh, the repeating elements in certain ways. Um, and have those all delay and sort of well echo. So that's what uh, is going to. Uh, that's what we're being covering today. And uh, so far, my bandwidth is four bars. We're solid. We're doing a solid broadcast. I don't know if anybody was here for the painful broadcast that I did uh, uh, from my location a few weeks ago, and uh, and I had some connectivity issues. But today we're. Uh, We've got a solid bandwidth. I know, Pedro, you're saying it's a little slow on your side. Um, I am monitoring my bandwidth, and I'm monitoring the feed off of Facebook, uh, which seems pretty solid so far. And I'll be monitoring the stream. So as questions come up, please uh, feel free to ask, because that's why we do this. I could record a tutorial and post it, and that's that. Or we can do it live, and I can field questions as we go through it, because there's things that I might skip over that uh, I might not realize that uh, I should actually go into um, into more detail. So uh, first thing I want to do is, that was a good question. What's the first thing I want to do? Let's do an overview of Echo Space. I had a, I gave you like the, the three sentence description of it. So let's jump to my, uh, my window here and uh, just talk about the, well, fundamentally, what uh, Echo Space is. You know what? I'm actually, I skipped something in my setup process here, which is kind of sizing my window down. Still with me? Yeah, you're still with me. Because you don't want to stare at a 1920 by 1080 window in your, in your broadcast. Now let's jump over, back over. Hold up, just got to think about it for a second. Oh, I know what I did. Sorry, to get this whole thing in the same window. Sorry, I feel a little bit like Mr. Magoo here. All right, let's get this out of the way.
You know what? I think I'm actually going to be stuck at 1080. That's my fault. But I will make sure to jump in and out to show you what's going on. So if anything's a little fuzzy or whatnot, just let me know. Doesn't like to switch. Uh... Yes, this will be available to watch via Red Giant Television later on. All right. So we'll be able to do that. Okay, sorry. So let's go. So let's uh, start in a new comp here and talk about the fundamentals of uh, echo space and what really what's going on when we're using trap code echo space. So um, I'm just going to make a very simple composition that is let's say 100 wide by 800 tall and this will be uh, echo piece. And in here I'm just going to draw a simple shape. Um, let's do in fact let's just do a simple polygon using shape layer and I will make this just three points and stretch this out so that it is kind of a stretched out triangle. Let's go into my scale, unlock this and go like that. So this is the starting piece that I'm going to have. In fact, let me animate this in. So I'm going to start it from down here and let's uh, scale it over time. So I'm just going to do a basic scale and position move on this. Sort of like your first After Effects. So anybody remember their first thing, like the very, very first thing you animated with After Effects and tried to figure out what your, um, what these keyframe things were all about. I, I seem to remember mine being uh, playing cards, like an early version of After Effects that shipped with uh, some tutorial media of these uh, playing cards that you had to move all over the screen. Okay, so uh, I've got my little echo piece and I'm going to drop that in here. Actually, let's keep things organized here. Call this my lesson comp. So this uh, just does a simple animation on like that. So echo space allows us to uh, repeat this thing and have those repetitions ripple out with their uh, with the different parameters that we have available in echo space. Um, one last thing I'm going to do is use the anchor point and anchor it at the bottom of that shape. So as I rotate this it's going to rotate about the bottom. Okay so enough of that. Let's get to trap code echo space. So the unique thing about echo space is it's kind of uh, unique in its uh, fundamental concept like when you apply effects, like even the echo effect in After Effects, it's basically uh, rendering it directly on the layer or on the adjustment layer. It's rendering a pixel-based effect. It's looking at every pixel on the screen and repeating that over time. So if we're doing like an echo effect, we're just repeating pixels over time. So what's unique about echo space is that it actually controls real After Effects layers. So these layers can cast shadows, they can intersect, they can do all kinds of crazy things that are unique to working within After Effects, the After Effects 3D space. So echo space acts as a, in, a sort of an in-between between the After Effects world and the sort of controlled echoing uh, expression world that uh, um, that is fundamental to echo space. So let's go into the setup here and let me actually uh, show my my screen. There we go. So in the setup, the first section, we have how many instances we want of the, uh, uh, the, the object. So starting with the very first one, you gotta count the first one. So let's say I want um, 12 of these all spaced evenly. I will want 11 instances and if I want these to be all offset, uh, the default Z offset is 10 so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'll also want to make this a 3D layer just so that makes a lot more sense. And um, what I'm gonna do is have each of these offset 
in Z. So let's say I make um, 12 of these and I offset them by 30, I click the repeat button. Oops, I, I did Z offset, I'm sorry, I want Z rotate. Set that to 30 and hit repeat. And we've got um, genuine After Effects layers uh, rippled throughout uh, my composition. You notice there's a bunch of nulls down here that sort of act as helpers and all that. And if it starts to look a little cluttered uh, and you start to panic, well, don't panic because um, actually what it does by default in the creation process is makes all those extra layers shy. So if you simply quick click the shy switch, it really cleans everything up because the only layer you need to touch is the one main layer that you applied echo space to. So now I had that, um, that animation start but there's really no echoing going on here. Now the thing with, uh, with echo space is if you've got two uh, fundamental types of, or I'm sorry, three fundamental types of echo that you can do, or repeating echo. Um, when we animate echo space itself and animate the repetitions, we can set all those uh, uh, repeating echoes to uh, actually delay. We can also set them to echo and delay off of the original layer. So if I actually animate this first layer and move it around in space, we can also echo those uh, um, movements. So we've got, let me jump back to my interface here. We've got the repeater controls here, and these have XYZ offset, XYZ rotation scale, and all that kind of stuff. So all of these we can echo, but we can also echo the movements of the original layer. And I mentioned there's three. There's Now there's one more, and if I click the clean button, this is going to get rid of all those extra layers. One more option we have is to actually uh, delay all of the layers that are created. So if I go into the second uh, option here, which is layer delay, I set this to point 0.1 and I click on repeat, uh, and if I unshy, you notice that all of the layers themselves are actually delayed. So three different things that we've got, three different options. I can delay the layers themselves. Uh, and then of course we can mix and match. There's nothing uh, limiting us to just doing uh, one or the other. So let's go into my delay here and set this repeater delay to let's say 0.1. So now as I move things or scale, let's say I scale this down 50%, that original one Oops, I actually set it to, let's not do scale. Let's go, let's do something like uh, Z offset. Let's have a move away. So I'll set the Z offset to, let's say, 1,000. So all of these are going to, one by one, move away and of course they're rippling. The thing with the repeater, it's much like uh, if you've used 3D stroke. Each repetition is um, sort of bouncing off of the the value of the prior uh, clone. So I have my first one which is at its original uh, value so that's why we still have one that's stuck at the very front. And each of those is moving a thousand pixels or being staggered a thousand pixels and staggering 0.1 seconds in time. So that's the repeater delay. Now the transform delay is when we get into the original layer itself. So let me set the transform delay to 0.1 seconds and we'll have this rotate. Z space, Z space. So as that one moves, in fact, let me get rid of this other animation here. So as that moves, these are all going to follow suit and echo and ripple out. I know this is kind of a crude animation, but I'm just showing the, the, the basics of it. So we've got three different types of delay. We've got genuine layer delay. And this is useful when you've actually animated the, the, the composition or you've, you're using a pre-comp and it's actually animated. Um, because there are no keyframes at the very beginning, if you want that animation to play and be staggered, we actually need to stagger the layers themselves. 
And then if we want to animate the layer itself and delay it, that would be the transform delay, the very bottom one. And the repeater delay is the repeater controls right in there. So let's show this in sort of a real world uh, sentence. There's actually a lot of interesting things we can do. I'm surprised this effect doesn't get more turtles. I know it's um, it's just one of those things where I guess uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I uh, Riff Master is asking. Or not even asking, he's just saying, I'm surprised this effect hasn't gotten more tutorials. I think it's it's uh, it's just one of these things that is kind of elusive. Like people know it can do cool stuff, but nobody really, you know, I it's it's not used as much as it, I think it should be. And actually what inspired this and and backing up, you know, I had this whole thing planned of like, I was going to do a big tutorial on Echo Space, and I had all these scattered ideas, and I couldn't really tie it all together into one big, you know, RGTV episode where I do this big hoopla of something that looks really cool, and I have, I have these bits and pieces of ideas, and uh, that's when I, th I said, well, I'm just going to do it as a live episode and show little bits and pieces that we can kind of, um, that we can kind of show, and, and, Imparts to the knowledge to you, but then um, what really uh, tied it together for me was uh, an experiment by uh, uh, Jack Chute, Chu, 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 Chute, um, which is on his Vimeo page. But actually, he allows downloading of it, so I actually stole. Uh. But it's a nice little. Um, I'm sorry, it looks like my audio is peaking in the back up. So there should be zero distortion going on. Um, it was this really nice experimental animation. Now, I, I'm not going to say what makes this great is Echo Space. Uh, I'm, you know, what makes this great is the use of space and color and, and all that kind of stuff. So, that said, what plugins do is make life easier for you. You take your idea, and then rather than spending, you know, 12 hours animating those individual layers, you tell them to to echo and you've saved most of the work. A sprite building tool in particular. Oh, don't get me now you're dirty. I'm already going off in different directions. If I start thinking too much about integrating echo space in particular, my head's gonna explode in eight different directions at the same time. So it was a really great uh, piece. It got a lot of views and got some buzz and all that and uh, I thought it was really cool and uh, so I, I definitely wanted to kind of, of take this and, and break down some of the ideas that are presented here, because I think people will really like this, really like what is possible with that space. And hopefully, you'll, you know, you'll be able to take some ideas of your own or apply this on your own. And actually, I, I've got some, some, a little bit of a uh, different spin that I can take on this. So let me open up the comp that I've got that does just that. That's my Pyramid Echo. Let me cut back over to my, I shouldn't say cut, it looks like I've got a dissolve going. Martin, late to the party. Well, we're just starting a, uh, a lesson. So I've just done a, a sort of a background on echo space. And uh, now I'm starting a basic little, little breakdown of uh, kind of a colorful little pyramid animation. So again, I'm not, I don't want to claim that this is my design or anything like this. I'm sort of bouncing off the ideas that that, uh, that Jack presented. Um, and I'm trying to integrate some of my other ideas, but I want to come close enough that people are going to see how it was done, but also uh, pass along ideas that you can use. So let me go inside my, um, actually, this is, this is my echo layer. Okay, never mind. Well, let me turn off a lot of this extra stuff. I've got some color correction and grunge and all that kind of laid on top of here. Now, one interesting thing that you can do with uh, trap code echo space, in fact, let me do a little side by side. They need a great education. In America right now, a kid drops out of high school every 26 seconds. That's three by the end of this video and 1.2 million a year. These dropouts are eight times more likely to go to prison, 50% less likely to vote, more likely
that you can't hear me. Every shot that I set up, every single different shot that I set up, I have to tell it to use a different audio source. So every time I add something, I have to tell it to use my audio. So I've been sitting here talking, you haven't heard a word I said. Yeah. So you should be able to hear me now, right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Now everybody's coming in and saying that we lost your audio. So anyway, uh, you saw a little bit of something that I was showing from uh, uh, from Buck, Buck uh, Design Studio here in LA. And uh, they did an infographic for the movie Waiting for Superman, which is about the education system of America. And I was saying, if you want to be or if you don't want to be depressed about the American education system, then don't watch it. But if you do want to be depressed about it or learn more about it, then watch the movie Waiting for Superman. But inside that, there is a little, it cuts to this uh, very great infographic with all these sort of echoing, spiraling elements that uh, lend itself really well. Uh, <laughs> I like very, uh, so yeah, I like very passionate about what I was saying with no audio. Um, so that's what I want to cover next. But first, I want to talk about this piece that uh, this experimental piece that that uh, Jack did. So, um, so because Echo Space works with After Effects layers, let's create a, a, a quick little comp here. Um, I can create a three-dimensional primitive shape. So let's say I make uh, a 500 by 500 square. And we can either do this manually, I'm going to do it the easy way using plane space. So I'm going to make a three-dimensional box, just to, to show uh, uh, an idea here. So I pull up uh, plane space here, and I'm going to create a box, and I need to tell it to repeat the layers. Box has six sides. I've got one, so I need to repeat five more sides. Oops, and I need to set it to the proper dimension. So I need 500 by 500 by 500. There. So if I create a camera and rotate around, we see we have this not so awesome looking cube, but uh, actually looks a little more awesome. Oops, I don't want a point light. Or I want a point light. Going to... There we go. So this is an After Effects layer that we can use. Well, it's an After Effects composition. And um, if I drop this, let me just go back into my lesson comp here. I'm going to actually get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to click the Clean button, because you can get a whole lot of After Effects expression errors if you start deleting individual layers there. Um, let's drop that box in here. Where is that layer? Right there. So let's drop this into my lesson comp. So this is uh, a layer in After Effects right now. I can make it a 3D layer, and I can also collapse the transformations of it. So now I've got a fully 3D box in here. Now it's ignoring that light because uh, lighting needs to be in the, the main comp, not the, the sub comp. Yeah, let's go to full size here. So this is also an After Effects layer. So I can use this with Echo Space just as well as I can use any of the other two-dimensional layers. So let's zero out the orientation here. And let's create a camera. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, or pull back. I shouldn't say zoom. I'm actually going to dolly back. There we go. So just to show some basic uh, Echo Spacing with this, let's go up to track code, echo space, and we can apply this here. So I'm going to go into the setup. Uh, let's do nine instances so we can have 10 boxes that all offset in the Y direction. Um, if these are 500 Y, let's set it to 520, negative 520. Is that the right direction? Yes, it is. Negative goes in the upward direction. So now I've got 10 3D boxes that I can rotate around. And um, let's say I start this at uh, a zero scale and have it sort of spin in one direction. So let's uh, set a couple keyframes here. Oh. 
and I want the transform delay. So I'm actually transforming the original layer. So, so if I scale that one up, the rest are all going to scale. Let me zoom this in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I've scaled the original layer so they all ripple out. Um, and also let's do some Y rotation. Set that to minus 180 so it's going to do half turn and, and these will all do a nice little half turn inward. Or my computer will just sit and think. Let's cut back to me. I hit RAM preview and now it's thinking. Oh, there it goes. I think this is my first RAM preview of launching After Effects here, so I had to do all the background mojo. Let's go back to this full screen. Of launching all the uh, individual rendering thingies that go on in the background. So you could do, in fact, I have a nice little uh, chart set up just like this. I did some uh, some expression stuff in here. but uh, So let's say I have 10 boxes in here, and they all kind of spin on and ripple on. Uh, this would be, I think, a cool way to perhaps do an animated chart or something like that. And then you could even zoom into this uh, cube right here, you know, and you could break it up even further because again these are After Effects layers so at this point I could swap this layer out or I could duplicate that layer um, or apply all kinds of effects to that individual layer. Uh, in fact let's locate that layer right now. Um, that would be that layer right there. It's got a, a little highlight on it as well. Let me uh, I'll turn off that adjustment box. But if I wanted to, this to suddenly do something different, I could split it and get rid of the expressions on it and have that do its own little thing um, because it's its own little After Effects layer. Um, and in fact, uh, that's um, kind of what I'm going to do with this uh, as I sort of got off on a tangent of uh, this pyramid thing. So I'm, sh I don't, I'm, I'm assuming the, uh, the original that I was t uh, showing you um, actually had a, a two-dimensional layer. I wasn't sure if it was three-dimensional or not. But uh, in this example that I did, I actually set up some shape layers. And uh, I don't have a camera in here, so I can't rotate around. And let's actually look through the camera view and stop getting error messages from After Effects. So I positioned uh, a number of uh, After Effects shapes and um, just rotate or angled them in so that they're all uh, basically a pyramid. So I have this pyramid facing the camera. Um, actually, well, I turned off the lighting so it doesn't look very 3D at this point. So let's turn off some of the lights. There we go. Let's zoom in. So if I were to move my camera around, now this is where we get into a little uh, fundamental After Effects um, disappointment is um, because these collapse, these are collapse transform or collapsed transformation layers or collapse layers I guess I'll just say um, because they do have an effect applied at the very top level this very first one um, we start to break a little bit of the intersecting that we would want uh, with um, these these big 3d layers but there's still some cool stuff so let's uh, let's get into setting this one up so let me how are we doing on time we're half hour in all right I like not being rushed. I always went last with my 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 our older format or other formats that we've done. Uh, where is that pyramid? Here it is. So let's drop this into a new comp. In fact, let's keep my my reference open here because I'd like to bounce back and forth. So I want to collapse that layer and make it 3D, and I'm going to rotate it toward the camera. Was that going away from the camera? Wait right there. Actually this is where lighting really helps to sort of get you a perspective on things. So I'm just going to copy and paste that lighting uh, from my previous comp. So now I've got this facing the camera and I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. Now I did something tricky. I don't know how Jack did it but uh, I'll show you how to sort of do cascading color uh, with these uh, 
um, these echoes. So let's uh, apply, well actually let's put a camera in here. I'll just copy my camera. Wait, no, I don't want that camera because my camera was in a different spot. Let's just create a camera there. Keep it simple. So let's, um, again, apply trap code, echo space. So these are, are going to be all the same color at first, which is fine. We can we can fix that. Uh, I'm going to make, what did I have before? One, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five copies of this. So let's make five instances. And, well, I'm going to leave all the repeater stuff zeroed out for now because that's what we're going to be animating. So let's click on repeat. It's going to create all those layers. And uh, let's hit the shy switch. We don't have to look all that at that big mess for now. So um, the first thing we're going to do, it does this nice little, um, if we go back to that, that sample, let's let, let it wrap back around to the, the front. The first thing it does is this nice little move where it just kind of uh, shoots straight out. I don't know if it's scaling or Z-space or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, there it goes. Back to me. Uh, the effect is kind of the same. We just have to set the offset for it to, uh, to uh, all line up. So let's hit E to show our effect. And uh, actually, well, I'm going to set keyframes for Z offset. Or actually, no, I'm going to use scale. Scale works just as well. So I'll use scale and Y offset. Okay. So I'll set the scale to, let's say, 10. And the Y offset, you, know, you can't see these because they're all the same color. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is actually cascade the uh, the color on these. There we go. So I want these all lining up so that the uh, the angles uh, all hit the same spot. So let's unshy these and uh, I'm going to add some color uh, effects here. I'm going to go into color correction and I'm going to use color balance HLS. This gives me uh, a hue that I can control for each layer and uh, Let's actually apply that. I'm actually going to apply it to the very first layer because this allows me to control uh, all of the colors from the initial layer. Even though, even if I le you leave this at zero, um, I'm still going to have one on that layer. So I'm going to copy that and I'll paste it. Now I'm going to do a little uh, expression trickery, and I'll, I'll paste this into the chat just so you uh, see it. Um, which is, <laughs> let's show my color balance here. So I want this layer to look at the color of the previous layer and shift the hue, let's say, I don't know, 20 degrees or 60 degrees or whatever you want it to be. Uh, somebody's asking how the triangle shape was created. Uh, the triangle shape is a uh, set of three layers. You know, I, you can watch me do it, but it's going to be really tedious. They're just 3D layers. They're 3D shape layers. They're all the same triangle shape. If I look at the front view. They're all just triangles, and they're all just w rotated into place. Um, there's no magic plane space thing that does this. Uh, we just have to um, just rotate them into place. There's probably some geometry that we could follow, but uh, or yeah, you know, math and stuff. But uh, I'm not going to do that. I just manually did it. So. Um, so back to staggering the color, um, I'm going to create an expression for this uh, second layer and I will uh, pick whip the hue of the first layer. So these are going to follow each other, uh, but then I'm going to add plus 20. So now this one is 20 degrees off from that one. Now I can keep copy and pasting and changing this value of 20, let's say I would do like 20, 40, 60, 80 or whatever. Uh, but that's going to be kind of tedious because I'm going to have to keep changing that value. Um, if I want to use the same expression over and over, what I can do is reference uh, what I call the, the layer above. So I can say this layer is a certain layer number. It's layer number six for me. And that layer is layer number five. And in, in expressions, that's called the index. So layer number six has an index of six. Layer number five is an index of five. So I can say, instead of use the layer quote unquote pyramid, I can say use the layer 
not in quotes, called index minus one, which is essentially use the layer that is the layer immediately above it, or the one less layer, the layer that is numbered one less. So now I can copy this and paste it to the rest. I'm just going to copy that effect with the expression. So now I have it um, sort of doing a little rainbow effect. Now it looks like 20 degrees isn't quite exactly uh, the, the, the spread that we want. In fact, if I want to get it really tricky, I can just go in and say add an expression control. Uh, we'll do an angle control and uh, I'll make that my, my value. So instead of saying plus 20, I will replace 20 with a pick whip value of this angle control. So now it's going to follow this value here. So if I set that to 30, now I have to do this again. So I'm going to copy and paste that effect with the expression to all the other layers. So now I can control the, the, the color spread. So I can set it to 35 degrees or 60 degrees, um, 50 degrees if that's too far. And I can also control the initial starting color of all the, the layers. I know copying and pasting expressions doesn't always really help anything, but that I'm just going to paste it into the uh, social stream so you can see it. So we're using uh, a layer index minus one. That's basically the layer above it and looking at its hue. And then we're adding to that an angle control um, expression slider, or not a slider, uh, expression angle control, I guess we'd call it. Okay, so enough about color and expressions and all that. Now we can turn this uh, shy switch back on. Let's set this color balance, color back to zero and, whoops, looks like I, and that could be animated, yeah. So, um, so this starts at zero and it uh, animates back out and then we could let it sit there for a second. So I'll just copy and paste those. So I'll let it sit there for half a second and then we'll have it go back to zero. Now I have, what kind of delay do I have in here? Um, I don't have any repeater delay or transform delay. So right now these all zoom out at the same time. Uh, because I'm using the echo space repeaters, uh, I can go into the repeater delay, set this to something like 0.1, and now as these cascade out, they're going to delay, or each one is going to follow the one prior to it uh, by 0.1 seconds. Now, it's not possible to do frames, if you're wondering why isn't it in frames, is because frames vary from one one person to another, or one project to another. A frame in film is not a frame in NTSC, and it's not a frame in PAL. The length of time that one frame takes up is different. What's universal between all of us is seconds. So the controls are expressed in seconds. If you don't like that, then, well, you'll just have to get over it. Let's have it uh, rotate a little bit as it comes in. In fact, why don't we do, um, let's do some transform. So I'll set the transform delay also to 0.1 and rotate it in the, not that axis, because it's rotated on its front. So it kind of, I get a little mixed up. There we go. So as this, uh, as these angle back in, I'll have it rotate. Uh, let's see, 100. Oh, you know what I need to do? is I needed to adjust the anchor point of this original file. Let's go back to your very original file. You notice how my anchor point is actually not right at the center of uh, the of the thing, the pyramid. And I'm going to move that around so it's actually aligned right at the, the nose of the pyramid. I'm sure it has some sort of ge geometry turn that I'm going to call it the nose. So now as it uh, rotates and cascades, or actually as it rotates, the rotation cascades from one to the next. And we can have it snap back to zero. So my, oh, you know what? My anchor point's still off. I'm not going to worry about it. At least it's, it's, you know what to look out for.
It's one of the first things I should have done, which is uh, move the anchor point. In fact, uh, one of the things that gets animated here is, is the anchor point itself. So let's uh, rotate or move the anchor point. I'm going to animate the anchor point so that uh, this was one thing I, I remember watching the piece that uh, had been done by by uh, the piece that I'm referencing, which is the um, uh, Jack Chute's piece, and uh, I couldn't figure out like this, you know, when they all move outward and, and all that kind of stuff. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on with that. Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to do, let's do um, some Z rotation. So if I change the anchor point for this first piece, and then I start to go into the repeaters and rotate those in different directions. So let's set these all to 60. In fact, let's animate those instead of just changing the value. So set that to zero. So I'm, I change the anchor point of the layer itself, The the transformations of the the After Effects layer, and then in the, in the Echo Space Repeater layer, I set the Z rotation to change. So now the the base layer is offset in its anchor point, but then the repeaters, uh, the clones, are moving out and rotating in Z space. So they're all staggering. I think you're getting the, the the point. In fact, uh, I'll have to. I'll probably have. I should get uh, permission before I even post this as a quote unquote free project on um, on Red Giant People. Uh, get permission from uh, from from Jack to do that. I don't know what I did with my camera here. There we go. So um, I just added a little bit of color correction with uh, looks. And actually, uh, with all of the additional layers, um, I added a drop shadow. So there's a little bit of shadowing between uh, from one layer to the next. So let's look at a frame where these are. Yes, this video will be available for download afterwards. Now. Um, that's really kind of about the, the gist of the effect. Um, like I said, there's a little bit of grunge layer laid on top and using an overlay. Um, I used looks, but another thing you could look or use if you don't have looks, I just have an adjustment layer here. And uh, if you want some easy, quick color correction, you can always use Magic Bullet Mojo, which does a pretty good job on its own. Give it a nice amount of punch, push the tint one way or the other. I'm going to push it a little more on the cool side and uh, a little punch, maybe bleach it out just a little bit, suck some of the, some of the color out, do a bleach process. And uh, maybe some warmer tones on it. So there's before and there's after. And Mojo is on a I don't know if we still call it a price reduction, but we've recently, possibly temporarily, dropped the price from uh, down to uh, forty-nine dollars, which is in there. Uh, of course, I just clicked on the wrong thing. Right here, Magic Bullet Mojo, forty-nine bucks. Uh, is a great little tool, and as you can see, it's a, a nice, easy way to do some some color correction. So as I, I was doing this, I was thinking, wow, this this uh, looks uh, almost like a, like a paper cutout uh, stop motion kind of thing. Um, in fact, I think one extra thing I did was uh, add a little bit of a sharpen filter on this, which is one of these interesting trends I see lately. And I'm not entirely fond of it, but on this one, I thought that actually looks kind of interesting. So, um, speaking of stop motion, um, this week, uh, or just recently, uh, Aaron Rabinowitz, who's in the chat room somewhere, let me see. Uh, yeah, he's still there. 
uh, posted a uh, free preset called Sketchy Stop Motion Text. And uh, it uses a lot of uh, really cool things in there. The sort of sketchy background and sketchy uh, wiggly kind of look. And there is a breakdown tutorial of it, which I think I just... Oh, wait, no. It's uh, a quick tip. Let me show it right here. Quick tip number 56. Just go to the Red Giant site, redgiant.com or redgiantsoftware.com and go to RGTV and you'll find it as one of the more recent quick tips or is it post yeah there it is right at the very top product quick tips quick tip number 56 also in this RGTV uh, page you'll find this very episode that we're talking about right here um, and actually looking at one of the source photos of uh, what I was using as my uh, um, my, uh, you know, my my lesson material, and this was the other uh, piece right here, and this is where I was talking about uh, a great piece done by. Uh, here, let me go to my side by side, and bear with me for a second. I swap out this image for the buck thing, and I have to. Leads need social welfare assistance. Not eligible for ninety percent of new jobs are being paid 40 cents to the dollar earned by a college graduate and continuing the cycle of poverty. This is a frightening picture, but it doesn't have to be. When we change the odds, here's what it looks like. ensure that teachers like Miss Robinson help her students succeed. A solution is possible, and it doesn't just rest on her shoulders. Now that you know what's at stake, what will you do? Today there's a crisis in America. It goes beyond health care, the economy, and national security. Look a little closer, even right down the street. The crisis that's at the heart of our country is in our schools. Out of 28 reporting developed countries, American students rank 20th in graduation rates. While we were once pioneers in public education, now we've fallen behind. The key to solving all of these problems... Sorry about that. I don't know why it keeps, uh, it keeps on pulling out one my thing audio first. switch back to this. Education. Sorry about that. So what I was saying... The mistakes saying, are higher than we think. Here's is that, Robinson. Uh, she has 32 you are working students on a piece like class. this. Yeah, I lost her audio. Again. These kids are the future of our country. Let's let this cycle through. Um, in order to reach their full potential, is that when they people, need a great education. Uh, you know, you get a set of boards like this. Right Let's say you're now, a kid you drops go, out of high school they every 26 board, seconds. All these uh, repeating the elements and that kind of stuff. And, and what I see a lot, I've seen a lot of These dropouts are eight times more likely to go to prison. This was always like why I would come in and be the hero. More likely to need social welfare yeah. assistance, not go in and for 90% like, like, of new jobs. Yeah, people are like, there's got to be an easier way to do this. We don't by a so college we're just doing it manually. And, and continuing the and cycle and of poverty. And this is a frightening picture, but this, it doesn't like, have to This is an example that I'm showing you when right now. When you change the odds, these, uh, here's what it looks like. repeating elements, inspiring elements, and all that. I I mean, I don't know. I don't know I don't know personally the, the anime that, that did this. But um, I see some bits and pieces in there that kind of look like it might have been Ensure that teachers well, like Miss Robinson and help her know, students but, uh, succeed. I see some things that are just is off possible, by a little and it bit. It doesn't just rest on her shoulders. Exact, like now exact, that you know you what's going on, really stop state, and look at these pieces. What will you do? Um, in, 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 you know, frame by frame and all that. Things are just off by a little bit, which suggests to me that a hey, well maybe they today there's off a crisis in America. It goes beyond um, health care, the and national exact. security. And Look a little closer, even right down the street. The crisis that's at the heart of our well, country get off of is in our schools. Let's back on me. So the point being is that uh, Echo Space can make you look like a hero. Uh, when you are doing these things that look like a lot of work, 
it pays to know how to do it quickly. So uh, rather than uh, construct this one manually, let me uh, cut to my, my frame here. I just did like a, one of these opening shots, just like a quick, uh, you know, my best guess as to one of these little pieces. So actually the very first thing I showed you when I was showing you Echo Space, like the basics of Echo Space. Apologies about the uh, the audio. You know, I don't get a, um, the one thing that Ustream kind of lacks is a uh, sort of a multi-channel mixer that shows me my multiple inputs. Basically, I get one readout of the mix and it doesn't, I can't, uh, I just don't have the ability to, to monitor multiple channels to see when something's louder. So uh, hopefully some of that came through as I was saying it. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, um, one of the very the, the very first thing I showed you was taking a, a basic uh, just a pre comp like a sub comp like we want this one piece to be repeated over and over and over. Now you could do this manually, you could do it with expressions, but I think um, Echo Space makes this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot easier. So this will be my last thing that I'll be show showing you. So let's go to the uh, take this little source clone that I've got. I'm going to drop this um, into a new comp. And let's align that anchor point to the bottom. And make it 3D. and apply track code to echo space. So because this is animated inside the comp itself, we want to do a layer delay on this. So let's go into our setup. Um, let's do uh, a lot of these. Let's do, let's say 36 of these. And we will set the offset, the Z offset to zero and the Z rotation to 10 and hit repeat. I'm impressed that my math has been correct so far and uh, constantly dividing things by 360 and I keep getting the right number. Or actually, I think I did, yeah, I did 36, so I should have done 35. Let's clean and repeat. Now I've not set, oops, so I, <laughs> I was talking about the layer delay and I didn't actually set the layer delay to a number. So let's hit the clean again, that gets rid of all the layers. I set it to 0.1, actually that's probably way too long. I'll set this to point. Zero, 0.3 and then hit repeat and it's going to stagger each of the layers one by one. So now, there it goes. And actually it looks like my anchor point is off. Let me hit clean again. Move this up so I've got a little bit of blank space. Well, I'll just align, let me align the anchor point with the very bottom of the layer and hit repeat again. So now, I mean, what what this would be manually to do, I don't even want to think about, but this uh, has just made uh, life a lot easier for us. And like I said, these are After Effects layers, so we can go in, we can isolate individual pieces and change the color of them, or uh, if, you know, this one piece right here, I wanted it to pop out. In fact, I've got a sample here. Where's my, where's my info wheel? So again, a little bit of that grunge treatment. And uh, let's say, you know, you want one layer to split and pop out and uh, different, do a different color treatment on it. Uh, we can do that because they're real After Effects layers. We have complete control over each layer. Um, in fact, here is, I think this is a layer right here. So I just uh, duplicated that layer and uh, applied a tint to it. And uh, I think I got rid of the scale expression, just blew, blew out the scale expression that was on there from Echo Space, and then just did a manual scale of that, uh, that layer right there. <sighs> so I think that does, that about does it. It's an hour talk about Echo Space and all the different things you can do with Echo Space. You know, it's good for 2D layers, good for simple 3D layers, or even complex. Um, collapse transformation 3D primitives. You know, I showed you the cube or the, the pyramid um, and a couple tricks to give you some ideas about uh, staggering the, the color and that kind of thing. Um, 
using the, the uh, not hue saturation, but the color balance. So you get the individual uh, hue wheel that you can use with expressions. And uh, that's about it. Um, if there are any questions, I'd gladly uh, jump in and take them. Otherwise, we'll uh, start to wrap it up and uh, say our goodbyes. Thanks so much to uh, to Jack, Jack Chute that did the um, the uh, that piece sort of uh, was the catalyst for me to tie these little bits and pieces that I had, um, and then uh, allow uh, you know uh, use his pieces sort of inspiration to bounce off of. You know, it looked like uh, uh, just kind of a, a simple test, and the people re reacted to it quite well. Of, of this this uh, older piece of software, EchoSpace, and uh, Jack dusted it off and did something creative with it, and and a lot of people were just like, "Wow, how how you know that looks cool," and um, I don't see EchoSpace used a lot. I think there's a little bit of confusion on it, and um, you know how does it help you as a designer? So hopefully, I showed you today today as a motion designer how EchoSpace can speed up your workflow and just um, well, it also kind of becomes a sort of creative. Uh, motif for your uh, for your design you know another thing to add to your bag of tricks of ways you can sort of repeat and stagger and spiral and that kind of thing or not even spiral you know it shows you the 3d boxes and doing maybe box arrays and that kind of thing um, lots of ideas and uh, and I hope I get you get you thinking get you inspired to, to try some stuff on your own so uh, Echo Space is part of the Trap Code Suite. So if you have the Trap Code Suite, it's already in there. You all already have it. Um, otherwise, it is uh, on the, the Red Giant site under the Trap Code Suite. Individual products here, Trap Code Echo Space. And actually, let me show you my monitor. There. So as I navigate and not show you anything that I'm doing uh, under products, trap code suite. If you have the trap code suite, it's already in there. If you want, the individual product is right here. So thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, like I said, it's, I knew it was going to be a small turnout today because we didn't do a whole lot of promo on it, but. Uh, we're keeping it simple and uh, keeping it lean and mean. So if there's no more questions. I'll uh, turn off the broadcast. I'll hang out and chat for a little bit. And uh, if there's any questions that come through on the, the chat stream, I will be there to answer. Otherwise, thanks, everybody, for coming out. And uh, I won't even throw up the title card because I'll have to fix it in post.